not going to what's happening to us in the emergency of a scandal. Uh, I'm out in Nicaragua, and the my schedule is going all topsy turvy, so I've only got a half an hour I can spend here, which I regret very much. But uh, since we've been doing this for a few years, and the economy's been doing pretty well for all those years with your advice and counsel, I think the best thing that I can do now is ask for you for a summary of, and if it uh, comes out with some projections as to what the economy looks like and uh, where we're going and any observations of the deficit, I'd be very pleased. Hi, Mr. President, as you know, trying to summarize this group is like getting a sense of Congress sometimes. <laughs> is that okay? Somewhat disparate. We had four subjects you were asked to address. Uh, the first one was the strength of the dollar and its economic implications. I think the points were made that that trade restrictions uh, put on by us would raise the price of the dollar uh, rather than lower it, and therefore they would recommend against doing anything like that. The point was made that the jobs that we lose uh, through imports are highly visible, but the jobs that we gain are invisible. The point was made, I think, that to say the dollar is strong is sort of an anachronism, the dollar is worth what people will pay for it in the marketplace. And while it can be equated with purchasing power parity and so forth, it nevertheless is the market price that is paid. Uh, I would argue that uh, efforts to tinker with the international uh, monetary mechanisms such as have been advanced uh, would not be very useful. I believe that the information standard has now replaced the gold standard.
see what we can do this afternoon without binding the president. I know you've just barely seen the proposal. So having said that, I'll be a Bob Thurber. Thank you, Mr. President. The call uh, came to you on Thursday from me indicating that my colleagues would be very willing to enter into discussions to see if we could arrive at a compromise approach which would uh, dispose of this resolution which is to be called up uh, tomorrow and which will come up tomorrow unless things are altered and they're not, they're not very easy to alter at this point. We uh, heard back that you would be pleased to have such discussions, and uh, we then met again, my colleagues here and I, and some others in the Senate, met on Friday in an effort to develop a proposal which would represent uh, some give and take on the part of every senator who was in the uh, discussion. <clears throat> then uh, we were to meet again on yesterday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon to further develop our proposal, looking forward to coming to the White House on yesterday afternoon at 5 o'clock when we would enter into discussion with you, Mr. President, and. Uh, your department heads or your staff otherwise, and with the Senate <coughs> Republicans. We worked most <coughs> yesterday afternoon. Um, some of us worked until after 7 o'clock. On this morning, I, uh, oh, last night, there were several telephonic discussions as to the contents of the proposal that we were going to make. Those contents were not revealed, were not revealed to the press, and uh, until this morning were not revealed to the Republic. Mr. Dole and I talked last night. Um, I uh, agreed to supply him this morning with our proposal. I felt that the majority leader was entitled to have those proposals. I felt also that the president was entitled to have them enough in advance to respond uh, in whatever ways he might wish. And uh, let me say this uh, about Bob Doe. <coughs> I uh, have an excellent relationship with him. Working, <coughs> working relationship, and uh, it will continue, I'm sure. Each of us has some responsibility to each his own party, and we try to fulfill those responsibilities and be able to still work for the <coughs> in an agreeable and friendly way. We have here a proposal which has been put together by Democrats on all sides of the ideological spectrum. There are those here who would vote to unfence the 14 million. There are those here who would vote not to unfence. There are liberals. There are conservatives. There are some who may turn themselves middle of the voters, which I like to do, with reference to myself. And there has been give and take, and the product is the result of compromises which we ourselves have engaged in. Danny Inouye is the chairman of the Appropriations Subcommittee, uh, deals with uh, foreign assistance, and uh, John Kerry is here, who has just returned from Nicaragua. Tom Harkin was with John Kerry, in the effort to put to cut down on the size of our group, realizing that the Republicans would be expected to ask for a similar number, quite rightly, 
we uh, flipped a coin and decided which, whether it would be Mr. Carey or whether it be Mr. Parkin. And uh, Mr. Carey carried the, uh, the coin, so he's here. Now let me say this, that this compromise uh, has received contributions from all of these Democratic senators here, and most particularly from uh, John Kerry and from Tom Harkin. And uh, they, at all times, de uh, demonstrated a willingness to be reasonable, to listen to other Democrats, and in several instances have modified their, their own approach and wishes. And I'm sure that there's no person here who has exactly what he would want if he had to fashion the package for the Senate. You know, you say that. How many of you were out in Nebraska and how great it was, how much everybody loved it? Well, thank you, see you very so much. Good to see you. Mr. President, I hope to see you again. We're looking fine. Harris Payable is going to be a hell of a report. Hello, everybody. Well, how are you? Nice to see you again on this. How'd you get through the demonstrators? Yeah, they took three places. Oh, yeah, really? Come on, Everything grab it. I'm, I was just talking about a jam. Mm -hmm. Reminds me, who do you think was the first one that said that about the streets? Herr Goebbels, mm -hmm. who said, mm -hmm. yes, take it into the streets. And if you can control the streets, you'll control the nation. And that's where that's how the Nazis were the first with their oh, big youth demonstrations and so uh -huh. forth. Well, he was right in that situation in that case, wasn't he? He was, was right in that case, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, listen, I know you've got concerns, and I don't know whether to go into a pitch here and make a strong pitch first or to hear what your concerns are and see if I can respond to them. We believe that, first of all, and I have to say this much, I believe that this situation is not one of us sticking in something, our nose into something that isn't our business. Every, every evidence, every fact confirms that this is another Cuba. This is a Marxist-Leninist dictatorship. Uh, their people are miserable and unhappy with it. We're not out trying to ourselves overthrow a government. What we're saying to that government is sit down and negotiate with your own people to see if you can't restore the goals of the revolution. And I, I, maybe you're aware, but during the revolution, they appealed to the Organization of American States, the revolutionaries did, and said, would all the countries, which included our own, appeal to Somoza to step down to stop the killing? And the Organization of American States said, well, what are the goals of your revolution? And they provided them in writing. But the goals were pluralistic society, free labor unions, free press, free elections. These two guys look like demonstrators, so they let them through the gate. How are you? How are you? I wonder if the president was asking What kind of placard did you carry? Well, come on in. Hi, Don. How are you? Good to see you. Why don't you guys sit up there, Don, next to the president? I just, I feel very strongly in this, but I think we also have proposed something, and we've got some senators working right now with Democratic senators on they have a proposal, but we think we can meld the two that meets uh, some questions that they have, and Bob Byrd has said that he would like to be able to have the Senate come forth with a thing that is not partisan, that is the result of Democrat and Republican consensus, uh, because the Senate I think it boils down to the bottom line of are we going to have a communist totalitarian state like Cuba here in the mainland or are we going to support the people of the country who want to, the democracy that they fought the revolution for? But I know you've got some concerns and uh, I better let you have it and I'll try to answer them. Huh? Well, go ahead. I know well, I just lived down there. It's been a week now since I there a little over a week ago and of course in part of it was in Nicaragua. Quite honestly, it's the most depressing place I've ever been. Uh, I don't think Russia is uh, it's just a, a lost cause. And the only thing we can do is uh, keep them from making things worse and all sudden go over on the rest of the land. Um, I came back really more confused. 
Terry Bruce from Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how are you, Vice President? Nice to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Come on in, slide in, in, and we'll. I think we ought to have some handy placards. That situations this kind of you send up so that you can down carrying a placard and walk right through. Good point. Well, listen, I I know our time is limited and all, and I appreciate very much you coming down. And I know that you uh, have got some concerns. And, about uh, the situation there with Nicaragua. And let me just say, say one thing. I also know and understand how many of you uh, had people in your districts and so forth who were on the other side. And I, I can only say about that, that, whatever we do, I think we have got to, when I say we, I mean the government, has got to do a better job than we've done of getting facts to our people out there because yes I think the polls indicate a lot of people that are concerned about this and are opposed to this or that but I think it's because they've been subjected to a disinformation campaign that is very sophisticated and very well funded and it is operating in behalf of the Sandinistas and we just haven't been able to get the other story through I'll make a recommendation to you now that I've made to others who've been in here. The State Department's been putting on a little pamphlet just came out a few days ago. It's one of those tall ones, and slim, so you can read it in about 15 minutes. But it is about as good a summing up in there as I've seen of the misconceptions and then the facts. And not an argument of rhetoric or anything, but the facts, the actual situation of who did what and when they did it. And it would be most helpful in any discussions of what's going on. But now, let me just say, this plan that we proposed is aimed at ending the killing. It's aimed at getting the Contras and the Sandinistas into a conversation. They were all part of the same revolution. The, the Contras right now are, uh, have got all this talk about them being dominated by the former uh, Somoza government is not true. Their leaders, many of them, were imprisoned by Somoza. They are made up, their growth in ranks has become, uh, is in part due to the desertions from the Sandinista army. Kids that have been drafted down there and desert, they don't go home, they go over to the, to the Contras. But all that we want to see and all this talk that we're out to overthrow a government. No, we've said from the beginning what the people of Nicaragua want, and in large numbers, is they want the revolution that they fought. They want the same goals that were given by the I see you. Hello, Paulita. How are you? Good to see you. I'm glad to hear that, because I'm just loaded with solutions here. <laughs> But uh, I just, we were talking this morning about it, and you know, it's a case now of, I think of, I know it's tough, and I know the thing that we've done, and yet, we're still cutting in the area of, you might say, growth, because the non-defense part of the budget will be the biggest it has ever been in history, with, even with this plan. So, uh, what are your worries? Well, <laughs> 22% my voting population on Social Security. And I, I'd just like to tell you what I think. Congress has already approved taking Social Security off budget during the 83 exercise that we had on Social Security amendments. But they didn't make it effective until FY 1993. <laughs> I think Republicans and the, with the President's leadership should introduce a bill to take it off budget in 1986, at the least in 87. I have already introduced legislation March 20th to do that, S724. Social Security does not affect the deficit. It's not a discretionary spending program competing for scarce funds out there in the general revenue yeah. fund, as you know. I've heard you give this speech. It's a self-financing program, and by law, we can't touch that money. That's their money. Any money saved from decreasing Social Security can't be used for any other purpose, and you and I know that. I 
you've said that many times. I've heard you say this. What we do. <laughs> good, good. Hello, Robbie. Good. How are you? Happy to see you. Come on in. How are we organized? Uh, I think the speech was good. I like the I like the growth part and the tax part more than I like the, the, the budget part, but uh, the speech well, was good. The whole thing was for the budget. It's an we're having. We've got more wiring phone response than we've ever gotten on the speech. And someone said, I don't know if you, someone said that uh, Bob Bird's response was just panned by shales this morning in the Washington Post. Oh. Among I other things they commented on his hair was looking a little blue and all, it evidently it's just really uh, He did oh, a terrible, did you, did you a, see it? You didn't one. see the, the Bob Bird response. No, but I, I saw the 